Hi everyone, just wanted to take a minute to talk about how to solve absolute value equations. And in this video, we're going to look at both um, different cases that we can encounter. The case uh, where there's an x only on one side of the equal sign, and then the situation where there's an x on both sides. Um, so, what we are always, always, always going to do first when we are dealing with absolute value equations is we are going to start by isolating the absolute value. So similar to how you would isolate the variable uh, when you're solving an equation without absolute values, when you're solving an equation with absolute values, you just isolate the, uh, the absolute value, meaning you get the absolute value by itself. So the first thing I would do is add 6 to both sides to get rid of that. And that'll leave me with 1 third times the absolute value of 3x minus 2 is equal to 1. Um, and now it's still not fully isolated because we still have this 1 third out front. Um, and we want to get the absolute value completely alone. So we want it to be the absolute value of something is equal to something. That's our goal. We want to get it so that an absolute value is completely alone. So we'll multiply both sides by the reciprocal because if um, what we would do is we divide this by one third, and when you divide by one third, that's the same as multiplying the reciprocal, which is three over one times three over one. So we get the absolute value of three x minus two now um, is equal to three. At this point, we need to break this into two separate equations, and that just has to come from the fact that if you think about it, like the absolute value of negative two is two and the absolute value of two is two, right? So if the inside is negative, it would end up being three. But if the inside was positive, it would still end up being three, right? So that's why we have to worry about both a positive and a negative and we have to split this into two separate things. So one of the equations that we can write, this is kind of our positive situation, we'll just leave it alone without the absolute value. So this would be like saying inside I ended up getting that positive three, the absolute value of positive three was equal to three. So that's the first case scenario. And then the other scenario would end up being if we had a negative, right? We're saying this inside here would ended up being negative three. So then I had the absolute value of negative three was equal to three. So in that case, we're saying x minus two um, the absolute, I'm sorry, 3x minus 2 is equal to negative 3, right? So either one of these will satisfy this absolute value equation, okay? So now you just solve this the way you would solve any other um, equation. So you get 3x equals negative 1, x equals negative 1 third, okay? Now, when you are solving for absolute value equations um, and you get an answer, you always want to go back and just confirm that it works. Um, you're going to see a situation where it potentially can't work uh, coming up, but you always do want to err on the side of caution and double check and make sure it works. So the absolute value of 3, negative 1 third, and I'm just plugging in at this point. Um, for simplicity. It doesn't matter if I plugged in up here at the beginning or if I plug in here. Um, really, we just had to plug in before we remove the absolute values. Okay, so that's the only difference. We remove it before the absolute values. Uh, we plug it in before we remove the absolute values. Um, so it doesn't matter if we do it here, if we do it up here. I just picked here because we've already, you know, simplified a bit. So minus two, is three. All right, and then I get the absolute value of negative one minus two is equal to three. And then clearly this is going to give you that uh, negative three, the absolute value of negative three is equal to three, which is good, right? Because three is equal to three. All right, now let's go about some of the other one. I'm just going to do it in blue um, because why not? So plus two, plus two, 3x equals 5, x is equal to 5 thirds. And again, I'm just going to plug it back in to double check, make sure that it works. 
So we get 3 times 5 thirds minus 2 is equal to 3. Uh, 5 minus 2 equals to 3. So absolute value of 3 is equal to 3. That is clearly true, so we are good. So both of these work, right? So x could equal either 5 thirds or it could equal negative 1 third. And e, either of these are valid solutions. Um, so this is how we would actually solve that particular problem. But now we need to look at a scenario where we don't have x just on one side. Um, and this is where things can get a little tricky because this is ultimately going um, to potentially result in solutions that are what we call extraneous. And extraneous solutions are just solutions that uh, do not work. Based on the way we solved it, it says it should be a solution, but then when you plug it back in, it doesn't work. Um, and the reason behind that, we'll get in a little bit, uh, explain a little bit more after we um, go through it, okay? So, again, First thing we need to do on any problem is isolate the absolute value. This time, the absolute value is already isolated. So we need to get it in the form absolute value is equal to something. Right now, it's absolute value equals 3x plus 2. That's fine. It's already isolated. If we moved anything over to the other side, we will have essentially, you know, unisolated it. I don't think that's actually a phrase anybody would use, but... Um, that's essentially what we've done. So we leave this as is, and we just need to now break it into two different equations. So the first equation we can break it into is, again, the situation where the inside is positive. So we just leave it as is. Okay. Um, and then we have to deal with the situation that we dealt with before, where the inside's negative. Where ultimately, 2x plus 3 is equal to negative 3x plus 2. And I put this in parentheses because we're looking for the whole thing to be negative, right? Um, just like before, it was negative um, 3 or 3. Uh, in this case, we have 3x plus 2, or we have negative 3x plus 2. Now, you'll kind of notice right away that we've introduced a negative um, over here, and over here we don't necessarily have that negative. But just from what we're talking about here, we know this side of the equation as originally written with the absolute values. That's positive. However, this right here, that x, we don't have any restrictions on x, right? There's nothing saying that x can't be a negative number. Over here, we're saying everything's going to be fine. It's in the absolute value. So it's ultimately all going to be positive. But we don't know if x will be positive or negative. If x is negative, we could actually create a situation where the right-hand side is negative, but the left-hand side is positive. And that's how we result in extraneous solutions because the x doesn't have any restrictions on it. It can be positive or negative. Um, and if it's positive, it usually does not create an issue. And I say it usually does not create an issue um, just because in this case, we're only dealing with pluses. You know, if you have a positive x, but then you are subtracting by something, um, that's a different story. But um, it, it can really create a lot of issues on the right hand side in particular because there's nothing forcing it to be either positive or negative. And you know the left hand side over here has to be completely negative, okay? I'm sorry, the left hand side here has to be completely positive. So let's actually go about solving this. So we have 2x plus 3 equals negative 3x minus 2. Um, so I'm gonna just subtract the 3 minus the 3, so get 2x equals negative 3x minus 5 plus the 3x plus the 3x. So then I get 5x equals negative 5 
When I divide, I get x equals negative 1. Okay. Now again, we always need to double check that. And I, as I warned you, we could end up with a negative x, even though we're dealing completely with a positive left-hand side. And over here on the right, we're dealing with only pluses. But let's double check and see what happens. Because it might still work out, even though x is negative. Um, Again, just x being positive or negative does not inherently mean that it'll be extraneous or not extraneous. Uh, but there's always a few warning signs you can take a look at. And it's always important to think about, you know, is it negative? Will it end up being negative on this side? Well, there's a plus. Will that cancel it out? So these are some things to, to think about. So absolute value of 2 times negative 1 plus 3 is equal to 3 times negative 1 plus 2. So I get negative 2 plus 3 equals negative 3 plus 2, which ultimately gives me the absolute value of 1 is equal to negative 1, which clearly is not true. The absolute value of 1 is not negative 1. It is one. So this solution, we have to throw out. It does not work. It will not satisfy our equation. And as I said, that just comes from the fact that this side has to be negative. I'm sorry, this side has to be positive. I keep saying negative. It's supposed to be positive. This side is, has to be positive, but the x has no restrictions on it. So this side could be positive or negative, depending on what x we find. Um, and in this case, we find a negative x. And it caused the right-hand side to be negative. And we know when the right-hand side is negative, the left-hand side can never be negative. So it's extraneous. It does not work. All right. So now let's go back to the other problem, the other side. Um, and it, by the way, it is possible for neither solution to work, in which case there will be no solutions. All right. So we get 2x equals 3x minus 1. Uh, that being said, you could get an uh, answer where both of them work, and then you could have two solutions. That's okay. You could either have no solutions, one solution, two solutions. Um, if everything cancels out, there's a chance you could, you know, end up in a scenario um, where you don't, where the x's cancel um, in one case, and that can create an interesting situation. Um, but ultimately, the the big ones we're looking for is extraneous solutions here. So minus the 3x. Then I get negative 1x equals negative 1. So x equals 1, and I'm going to plug it in. So I get the absolute value of 2 times 1 plus 3, oops, absolute value, equals 3 times 1 plus 2. 2 plus 3, 3 plus 2. You can already see this is going to be the absolute value of 5 is equal to 5, and that's just true, so we're good. So we do know that x equals 1 is a solution. However, x equals negative 1 is not a solution. So this actually only has one solution. So if one of your solutions does not work, when you check it, it's extraneous as a reminder. Um, make sure it works if you have an x on both sides of the equation. Um, because again, there's not a restriction on x that prevents it from being negative um, or positive. There's no restriction on the sign of x. All right, so in summary, isolate the absolute value first. Okay, get it? So it's absolute value equals something. Create two equations. One's going to be positive and one's negative. That comes from the fact that, you know, the absolute value of negative 2 is equal to 2, and so is the absolute value of 2. Um, solve them both, and then remember to check if they are extraneous or not and confirm that they work. All right, I hope this clears up any questions that you might have. Um, please let me know if you have any more questions. Thank you. Have a great day.